And when we're talking about oral breathing, it's so common. It's actually endemic. Um, over the last few years, it's received widespread attention. Mouth breathing, I've looked at books that have been written for, since 1903. There's one even before that written by an American painter called George Caitlin, and he wrote that in 1872. And the book is called Shut Your Mouth and Save Your Life. And he went and he, he lived with American Indians because he thought that the traditions of the American Indians were dying out. So he went and lived with them and he painted. So he documented their history by painting. And in that book, he noticed that the American mothers, the American Indians, the, the indigenous population, that when the baby had the mouth open during sleep, the American Indian mother would go over to the baby and press the lips together. And he said this was brilliant. And he said the Europeans coming over and he said the children sleeping with their mouths wide open on their backs gasping for breath. This is written back in 1872. Mouth breathing is now endemic. This study here, 55% children habitually mouth breathing. Randomly sampled selection in a town in Brazil. They enrolled 370 children, clinical assessments carried out, 55% mouth breathers, 45% nose breathers. This study here, looking at children in Portugal, aged between six and nine, 496 answered questionnaires from parents, 56.8% of children mouth breathers. This study here, 150 children. They did two tests. One is to breathe steam against a mirror, the fog test. And the second was, which is quite a useful test because there's no discernible test to determine mouth breathing and nose breathing. So they had children take a sip of water, take a mouthful of water, and see if the children can hold on to the mouthful of water for three minutes. If you can hold on to the mouthful of water for three minutes, you were classified as a nose breather. If you couldn't, you were classified as a mouth breather. They found that 53.3% were mouth breathing. This study here, Japan, questionnaires from parents. They asked the question if they had more than two positive items amongst the three. If the child breathes with a mouth open, if the mouth is open ordinarily, and if the mouth is open when chewing. I was a mouth breather when I was a kid. And when I used to go to families or friends and have dinners, I remember that I'd be admonished for chewing with my mouth open. Of course, my nose was constantly blocked. If your nose is constantly blocked, you can't do much else but chew with your mouth open and breathe through it. And in this instance, they found, okay, they looked at two uh, more positive outcomes. If the child is snoring, you can snore with your mouth closed. Like, you can snore through your mouth. <sighs> or you can snore through your nose. <coughs> two, different, two, two different things. So it doesn't necessarily indicate mouth breathing, but it would certainly indicate dysfunctional breathing. If the mouth is open during sleeping, and if, of course, the mouth is dry when the child gets up, and the same would go for the adult. So they found here that it was the prevalence in Japan during the day was 35.5%, and during sleep was 45.9%. But this study was looking at the relationship between mouth breathing and atopic dermatitis. The relationship between mouth breathing, how you breathe, can influence many, many aspects. And I'm not saying that this is a cure-all or anything like that. But mouth breathing is stressful to the individual. Nose breathing is the key. You all know that the nose is not just the two holes in the face. Even the simple basis of nitric oxide that's emanating from the paranasal sinuses, and with each breath you take, you're carrying nitric oxide into the lungs. Nitro nitric oxide improves ventilation perfusion. It ensures that the ratio of air meeting the ratio of blood is equal. Generally, when we breathe, we hyperventilate with the upper part of the lungs. But with gravity, the concentration of blood is in the lower part, so there's a mismatch. And nasal breathing, harnessing nitric oxide, ensures that blood is distributed more equally throughout the lungs, and there's a better gas exchange takes place. It's estimated that when you breathe using your nose that your oxygen uptake is 10 to 20% higher than with your mouth. Mouth breathers is not healthy. And mouth breathers show, this is just for children, I just throw this in, I know it's not related, but you know what? I tell parents this because 
parents want their children to do well academically. And if you can show, and this is, getting, this is being studied now, this is a relatively recent paper, 2014, and most of the research is coming out of Brazil, for some reason. Most of the research is coming out of Brazil. Mouth breeders show cognitive impairment as well as attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Memory, concentration, attention, learning disability, low perception, and center, center, sensor and motor integration. It has been shown that children with excessive daytime sleepiness appear to have almost 10 times the risk of learning difficulties. This is motivation for parents when the children are coming in with their mouths open. If you say that there's an increased risk of poor academic performance, it's enough motivation, aside from the craniofacial changes that you're all aware of. So there's no study that I have came across linking how many adults mouth breed. I have never came across a study. I've been trying to find a study. I'm sure Chris Bowman down at the back of the room has been doing likewise. Maybe you have been doing it. If you find a study showing the prevalence of mouth breathing in adults, please let us know. We are dying to hear. This is the nearest that I've came across, the European Respiratory Journal 2008, that they showed that the oral, the percentage of fraction of breathing averaged 7.6% during wake and 4.3% during sleep. And I have to say, I do not believe those figures because I think it's far, far more prevalent than that. The amount of people that come in to me, and we have a typical questionnaire. I've seen thousands of individuals since 2002. I've asked them the questions. Do you wake up with a dry mouth? Do you snore? Have you ever been told you hold your breath? But the amount of people that wake up with a dry mouth in the morning is very, very common. How many of you here, you don't have to show me your hands, by the way, how many of you here wake up with a dry mouth in the morning? If you wake up with a dry mouth in the morning, it's a pretty sure thing that you're, you're having your mouth open during sleep, that you're mouth breathing during sleep.